Well, good morning and welcome to Noah's Window. Mary Alice, I want to talk about something that's come up a little bit. Of, I've been questioned a little bit about the uh, last week of Jesus' life and some of the things that happened during that week. And I know a question that's come up uh, several times has to do especially with Judas mm -hmm. and with Pilate right. because the question has been asked, well, uh, what Judas did and what Pilate did, weren't those things part of God's plan? So how can we hold Judas and Pilate accountable or responsible if it was part of God's plan? Well, I think, first of all, let me, let me just say, part of this misconception comes about because of some really warped entertainment that came out of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. uh, when you and I were in high school, uh, there was something called Jesus Christ Superstar. Mm -hmm. And it was a New York Broadway play. Of course, it was presented all over the world and it was, it was there for years. Uh, and it, it, it's not from the Bible, it's from somebody's warped idea of what Jesus' last, uh, last part of his life was like. But in that play, uh, the idea was presented that Judas was asking God why he was being chosen for such like an awful... Like he was a victim. Day. Yeah, like yeah. he's a victim. Yeah. And I think there have been a few other um, Hollywood slash entertainment uh, I, uh, things that have come out that have sort of communicated the idea that uh, Judas was a pawn in God's plan. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us this, that what happened with Judas, and, and, and we know what happened with Pilate as well, these were things that were part of God's foreknowledge, but they factored into God's plan. So God did not program Judas to do what he did. Right. God did not program Pilate to do what he did. But we have to remember that God sees the end from the beginning. I remember years ago, gosh, this is before we moved to Kansas, but you know me, I'm a longtime Dallas Cowboy fan, and I remember the last game that Roger Staubach quarterback that they won. It was uh, the last game of the regular season. And the Cowboys were playing the Redskins, and whoever won was going to be the division winner. And uh, the Cowboys got behind twice by 14 points, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, and that's in 1970. 1979, it's been a long time ago. But Roger brought him back both times, and he came back at, and brought the Cowboys back at the very end of the game with seconds to go, and they won. Well, when I was watching that game, I was chewing my fingernails, you know, because, you know, I thought the Cowboys might lose. Well, it was such an exciting game that one of the local channels in, in Dallas Fort Worth decided that they were going to replay the game. Which was very rare in those Yeah, days. it was very rare on Sunday night after, after um, you know, a, after the news. Actually, that was before cable came to mm -hmm. Fort Worth, if I remember correctly. So I, I decided I was going to stay up and watch the game again. And I watched it for about an hour and I went to sleep. And I remember thinking, you know, when I was watching the game in real time, I, I was chewing my nails. But when I was watching the replay, you know, I knew how it was going to end. Mm -hmm. And no matter how many times I watched that game, it was still going to end the way it was going to end. However, and this is the big however, things that those players did in real time did affect the outcome. Right. And I really do believe, and that's not a perfect illustration, but it's important to realize that God sees the end from the beginning. So when God sees the end and tells us what's going to happen, it's not going to change. But decisions that were made in real time had a bearing on the outcome. So that's very much the case with Judas and with Pilate. It, you know, what they did, God factored into his plan. And I, I'm, I'm out in front of my skis here, but if, if they had chosen to go a different route, the same thing would have happened. I mean, I really honestly believe looking at America the way it is today, if Jesus was in our world today, I think he'd be crucified again. Mm -hmm. And there would be different there'd be different villains and, and, and different players, but still, you know, sinful man, wicked man is is who he is and, and he hates God and and if, if God in skin, Jesus was on the earth again today, I think the same thing would happen. Well, Satan could always recruit somebody to do his new, his bidding. Right, right. But again, I, I want to make it very clear that God did not, God does not program anyone to Correct. sin. The Word of God is clear on that. That's so important. It, I'm so yeah. glad you explained that. It's Be, so important to know. Because the Bible tells us that God cannot tempt man with sin, neither can he be tempted with, with wrong. So uh, again, I understand where this comes from. Mm -hmm. it's, it comes from a real warped uh, group of entertainment. I, uh, but there's also a theological teaching right now that, that says that Judas didn't have a choice. So, Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure that the people who are purveyors of that theology would go so far as to say that, but if you took what they believe to its logical extension, 
it would wind up there. And of course, you've opened up a whole nother discussion, but yeah. there are those that are of the hyper-Calvinist persuasion, that's the term that I would use, the determinist persuasion, that say that God, God uh, mandates, He causes he everything, causes everything yes. to happen. And um, I think they find a certain comfort in that because they they have no responsibility. They have no responsibility at that point, and that's it's a it's a very peculiar theology, but it is gaining traction mm -hmm. with certain groups in the United States, and and I, I find that really sad. But again, I just want to get back to the point that God did not make Judas do what he did, did not make Pilate do what he did, but it did not stop God's plan from ultimately being fulfilled. And most of all, according to the book of Acts, God foreknew everything that was going to happen. So anyway, I hope that illustration on the uh, replay of the Dallas Cowboy game will help a little bit. It's not a perfect illustration, but it does help us to see that if God foreknows what's going to happen, and he is the only one who does, the outcome is not going to change. But decisions made by the players in real time did affect the outcome. And, and not to keep going too long, but. I think it's important to make the point, and it's hard for us to even conceive of this, but God is the only one who isn't locked into time because He created mm -hmm. time. That's right. And we can only process our world through a lens of time. And so if we try to fit God into that time constraint, then these are the conclusions we might come up with. But God isn't constrained by time. Yeah, I, I think I talked about this a little bit. I mean, at least I hinted at it in last week's message. I think there are a lot of people that want to put God on trial so that if or maybe definitely put the Bible on trial, that if somehow it makes sense to us in our mind, then, it, then it's okay. If the plan of God, as awesome as God is, if it made full sense in my mind, mm. um, it wouldn't be very much of a plan. And and so that's why Revelation is so important. I don't. This time I'm not talking about the book of Revelation, although I'm about to start it. Mm. I'm talking about Revelation small r, God revealing to us what we can't learn otherwise. Mm. Well, that's good. Well, I hope that helps you. I know we had several people who wrote in asking about that. Yeah, and I actually got a question on that. Uh, I do Q&A at the end of the 545 service, and, and that question popped up again. So I just want to make sure that I make that really clear. I mean, honestly, I think anybody who's objective in the Scriptures would know that God did not make Judas do what he did. But unfortunately, as I said, there's some, you know, there's some uh, entertainment works. There's some... Uh, written works that suppose that. Right. So, okay. hey, before we close in prayer, I just want to remind everyone this is going to air on Wednesday that there is not going to be a first Wednesday tonight. No, but tomorrow evening there is a, on, an online, online communion, communion yes. which you and I'll be part of, right. and our worship team, and I actually have a little message to share, yes. and that's tomorrow night. But in the meantime, Mary Alice, would you pray for us today? Yes, let's have a word of prayer. Oh, Father, we're so thankful that you are our God and that you give and sustain life and that you hold uh, the earth's foundations firmly, as we talked about yesterday, and that, um, Father, we just want to be reminded how good you are and be reminded that you never cause anyone to do evil because you are good and you are God. And thank you for that reassurance. And, Father, I just pray that you be with each and every one of us, each and every one that's watching or listening to Noah's window today, that you would... Uh, bless them, bless their family, uh, guide them through whatever decisions they have today, and I just pray for your protection and your blessing. We especially pray as we prepare for this weekend services that you would continue to work in the hearts and lives of those who have been invited, that we will see them come, and that the Holy Spirit would work in their hearts and lives to bring them into an eternal relationship with you. And we'll be careful to give you the glory and the honor and praise, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today on Noah's Window, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. See you soon. God bless.